This season of The Ones Who Succeed is brought to you by Skillshare. Maybe I could be anybody. Mm-hmm. Maybe anybody. You could slot in anybody and they would have done a good job. Like, yeah. you don't end up knowing, is it you or is it just the rocket ship you're on? Yeah. Hi, my name is Campbell Barron, and I'm a 15-year-old entrepreneur and content creator. And you are watching my video podcast, where each week I meet with inspiring entrepreneurs and talk to them about their journey to success. Hear their stories, experiences, and firsthand what it took to succeed in their field. Why am I doing this? Because I want to learn from the ones who succeed. And you can too. Welcome back to another episode of The Ones Who Succeed. I'm Campbell Barron, and today I'm joined by my wonderful guest, Sukinder Singh Cassidy. Sukinder is a serial entrepreneur behind multiple businesses such as Yodely, Joyous, The Board List. Sukinder currently serves as the president of the online ticket exchange company StubHub, as well as she serves on the boards of companies like Urban Outfitters and the telecommunications company Ericsson. Sukinder, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thank you for having me. So. I like to kind of start my interviews off at the very beginning. Let's go back to your childhood. Okay. What were you like? Uh, Intense. Intense. (laughs) I was always intense. I was always uh, the kid who uh, over-delivered on a homework project, um, seriously passionate about whatever I did. Yeah. Intense. And I read that you kind of, your parents, you came from an entrepreneurial family. Your parents were both doctors and they ran their own practices. Yeah. Do you think that had an influence on you later on in your career? For sure, for sure. I always tell people that uh, my mom and dad co-led a medical practice for 30 plus years, but my dad was much more of an entrepreneur. I mean, as much as he loved being a doctor and helping people, which he really did, he loved running a small business. So Sukinder eventually went to Western University and got a job working for a prominent investment bank. She worked in New York and London for some time, but fell in love with California while visiting a friend at Stanford. So she decided to move to Silicon Valley and eventually got a job working in a company called Jungly. Jungly was a tech company that helped consumers shop by finding and comparing products on the internet. Six months later, Jungly was acquired by Amazon, and Sukinder moved to Seattle and started working for the company. Keep in mind, this was the late 90s. And so Amazon, that's in very interesting because back then Amazon was nowhere near as big as it is no. today. I mean, who could have predicted? What was that like? Uh, well, at the time it was a really small company. It was probably about 1,200 people. Really? Uh, main office was about 500 people in the corporate office. Uh, so still a company where you would see Jeff Bezos yeah. pretty often. Uh, at, that, at the moment I entered, Amazon was only doing first party retailing and they bought Jungly because it was their first attempt at Amazon Marketplace. Mm-hmm. And it would take probably, I mean, look at Marketplace today but this is circa 2000, about 1999. So by the time Amazon really cracked marketplace, it was probably only 10 years ago. So yeah. like kind of we were instantiation kind of 0.0, but it tells you something about how hard and how long Jeff Bezos has had certain ambitions because in that case, he had the ambition for marketplace when he bought a company and it took many tries before it worked. So Sukinder eventually left Amazon and moved back to San Francisco to co-found a company called Yodely. She joined four other co-founders from Stanford to build a platform that allows users to see their credit card, bank, investment, email, and travel rewards accounts all in one place. This experience enabled her to scratch her entrepreneurial itch and taught her valuable skills like pitching to investors in Silicon Valley's Sand Hill Road, the hangout spot for many VCs in the area. But eventually... Five or six, I think it was about five years later, Yodley had, you know, undergone multiple rounds of funding. It was uh, reasonably successful. It had survived the bust, which was its yeah. own, you know, yeah. success. Um, I was starting to think about what's next. 
because Yodley had a great CEO, I was never going to be CEO. That person, that CEO is still the CEO. He's great, a guy named Anil Aurora. And so it wasn't clear after five years, like what my next learning challenge would be. So I was starting to think about um, starting another company. Uh, I knew the founders at Google because they had raised money at a similar time to us. I knew the chief business officer. Uh, we shared common investors. Uh, and so I think uh, the folks at Google learned I was thinking about what's next and called me up and we started a conversation and seven months later, I quit Yodley to go join Google to start local. So Sukinder worked her way up the rankings at Google and eventually became the president of Asia Pacific and Latin American operations. It was a big role with lots of responsibility. However, after six years at Google, she decided it was time to leave. The thing about Google that was amazing and continues to be amazing is that it's a rocket ship. You know, the, I mean, those are like once in a century products that create that kind of stickiness, monetization that just keeps giving that, you know, Google's almost 20 years old and is still growing 20% a year. I mean, that is like, Crazy. it's kind of unheard of. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you get to be a part of that rocket ship, it's both an amazing experience and it accelerates your career and you get challenged in new ways. The converse is, maybe I could be anybody. Mm -hmm. Maybe anybody, you could slot in anybody and they would have done a good job. Like you don't end up knowing, is it you or is it just the rocket ship you're on? Yeah. And so I think when you want to challenge yourself at the next level, the question I was asking myself is like, first of all, am I ever going to be CEO here? The answer is no. Um, And that's okay. But again, my sense of personal impact and personal opportunity was like, for me, I want to go build again. And I want to know that, you know, that I'm having the impact. It's not just, it's not just, gosh, I'm lucky to be in this place. So eventually, Sukinder left Google to found another company called Joyous. Sukinder and I talked a lot about Joyous, and it was a really interesting conversation. So if you want to hear that really interesting conversation, you'll have to listen to the Ones Who Succeed podcast, link in description. But while building Joyous, Sukinder launched the Board List, a platform that connects CEOs who are looking for board candidates with women who are peer-endorsed for company boards. Why was this something that was important to you? Why did you decide to launch this? Uh, Well, first and foremost, I think we kind of chatted about my career in the Valley. I feel like for the most part, this has been a great place for me. I mean, certainly there have been challenges and hurdles and, you know, and things that didn't go the way I wanted. But over the last 20 years, I felt like I found my tribe. More Mm -hmm. often than not, it was a place where I could succeed on my merits um, that I could try things, launch things, right. And uh, be successful. So, you know, there's been a lot of negative press about what it's like to be a woman in the Valley. But yeah. I launched the board list on two premises. Number one, that we have to start introducing solutions to this problem. Yeah. Uh, that technology itself can be a solution to the problem of diversity. And that, you know, I take the optimist view, which is, you know, I think there's so much positive opportunity for women to participate in uh, the business of the Valley, not just at the entry level, but really at the top level, which yeah. is you know, not just as CEOs, but in the boardroom of Valley companies. And so I feel like having lived here and participated in this ecosystem, I, saw, I thought that technology could be used as a solution. I had a desire to give back because I've had a generally good mm-hmm. uh, career here. And then number three, the business opportunity is that putting women into the boardrooms of more private companies uh, will not just bring better business performance. It itself will also help drive the flywheel of diversity. So you kind of get like many things that you solve with one, <laughs> with one single arrow. Coming up, I continue my conversation, but first a quick message from our sponsor. This season of The Ones Who Succeed is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 20,000 classes in business, marketing, technology, design, and more. You can take classes in social media marketing, video editing, entrepreneurship, you name it, they've got it. So whether you're trying to deepen your professional skill set, start a side hustle, or just explore a new passion, Skillshare is there to keep you learning and thriving. So join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today because Skillshare is offering the first 250 people who click the link in the description two months of unlimited access to over 20,000 classes all for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash succeed. Again, that's Skillshare.com slash succeed to start your first two months now. That link is also right here on the top right corner of this video and a special thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this season.
how did this idea directly come to you? Were you lying in bed one day thinking, well, this should uh, be the site that Not connects. quite. I mean, I was, I was sitting on the boards of companies. Yeah. I've been sitting on the boards of companies for the last 10 years. Uh, but I think uh, what was happening was... Uh, several tier one VCs would reach out to me to talk about women in the Valley, like Mm -hmm. just as a general subject. And one VC came to me and said like, what should we be doing to get more women in the Valley? And we were just brainstorming ideas. I remembered I was on the couch at Joyous with this male VC and we're brainstorming ideas. I said, you know, I said, one thing that'd be super interesting. You guys are all talking about what to do to get more women in engineering. But I'm like, you realize you could change the face of every company in the Valley today if you just put a woman on the board. And he was like, that's a great idea. I'm like, it is a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> and we were, and I said, in fact, I said, as, a, as an industry, you all should get together and, and say, we're going to change this industry by putting a woman on the board of every uh, Series B company and beyond. He's like, you're right. We should do that. And I said, well, if you end up doing anything with that idea, let me know. I'd love to be a part of it. And six months later, I was still working at Joyous, and he was, I'm sure, investing in companies. And I reached out to him. I said, hey, you know, I am just finished my last fundraise. I'm starting to think about what I can do to participate more actively and give back. I was like, did you ever do anything that with, I, with that idea? And he was like, no, we didn't. You know, we're just going to worry about our own companies. We're not going to do anything industry-wide. Um, and then I talked to two more tier one VCs. And I said, you know, what, what do you think of this idea? And they're like, it's a good idea. And they're like, we're not going to do anything about it. And so I pitched the idea a few places. They thought it was interesting. I didn't do anything about it. And then six months later, kind of long story short, frustrated with solutions. I was like, they're not going to build it. I'm going to build it. And she did build it. To date, the board list has over 2,000 qualified women, 3,000 industry leader endorsements, and has influenced over 100 private and public company board placements. That's 100 different companies that were impacted by the board list and their platform. Not bad if you ask me. You've kind of been on both sides. You've been the founder, the CEO of a startup. Yeah. You've kind of got the fix of building a company. Yeah. You've also been a very successful executive at an existing organization. Yeah. But something that I've, I think about quite a bit in 2018 is that being an entrepreneur seems like it's becoming more and more common. It is. Do you think, and I, I'm not saying that's necessarily yeah. a bad thing, yeah. but do you think entrepreneurship, like you've been in it, right? Yeah. You've been yeah. in the good days and the bad days. Yes. Do you think it's becoming too cool? Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, do I think it's becoming too cool? I haven't really thought about that. Uh, I'd say, I don't think, uh, let me separate this way. I don't think there's anything with makership being cool. I'd like makership to be more cool. And by by that, I mean the sense that the ability to create something has never been easier and more people should take advantage Mm -hmm. of it. Uh, I love the fact that the barrier to that has come down. Like people always ask me. Yeah, significantly. Like my daughter is... um, People will say, like, do you want her to study engineering? Like, sure, if she wants to. But I care far more that she understands that to be a maker is not this mystical thing. It's something that anybody can do, right? Mm-hmm. And she knows that. Like, she goes on her app, which is an Enlight app, and every day she photoshops and creates these great pictures, and we just created an Etsy store, right? I don't know whether she's motivated to be a full-fledged entrepreneur or not, but I do believe that with all of these tools, she understands that creation is easy and that it's teaching her things like design and system thinking and creative problem solving. These are the things that makership teaches you. You just have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that those skills are going to be tremendous for her life. So if that's cool, I'm all for cool, right? To your point, entrepreneurship, if you separate it from makership, is about the journey to build a company over a long period. And you want, you can want to be in it for a hot minute, but it is a journey that takes you know years and years of success. We started this podcast talking about Amazon. Yeah. 20 years ago, you would have never guessed that it would be the never. behemoth that it is today. Even Google. Like if you look at everything that Google's in from like the day I got there, 2003, would you be able to guess that it would be the company? No. That's 20 years. Like that wasn't like overnight. Mm-hmm. So I would just say that people think entrepreneurship is cool. Like – if you get into entrepreneurship, think it's cool. Just recognize that that cool journey is going to last on average at least seven years, possibly yeah. longer. So you got to make sure that something is sustaining you beyond those like two articles that somebody writes up about you or like the hot minute when you are considered exciting. Because for all of those hot minutes, there's, you know, hundreds and thousands of hours that are spent where you're toiling in, in relative obscurity. So um, I hope makership is cool. Entrepreneurship, I hope you're in it for the right reasons because it takes a lot longer. Oh yeah, and you might be wondering, how did Sukinder end up at StubHub? 
The short story is that after selling Joyous, she was looking for what's next and ended up becoming the president of the ticket exchange giant. The long story? Actually, you'll have to listen to the Ones Who Succeed podcast to find out the long story. Again, link in description. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to be on my show. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you for having me. Everyone loves to say companies are bought, not sold. Yeah. Uh, but you are absolutely right that the vast majority of people are thinking about how to try and sell their company. So even though everyone tells you that, when you are one of those founders, you have to try and figure about orchestrating a sale. If you are contemplating it and scheming it and thinking about it and dreaming about it, then I think you need to go and do it. <laughs>